50 members. Uh, we were named Green Business of the Year uh, this year. So North Bay Biz Magazine named us uh, Marin's Change Maker. Game Changer. Game Changer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's here. So, um, That's and they, me. They, You're the Game Changer. Yeah. They, they named one company and we're in. And we were in. So we were very pleased yeah, about that. That's a big deal. Um, and so we thank you all for being here. This is, uh, I'm going to let Alejandro, who's going to head up um, the uh, startup grind, Marin, uh, kind of explain this launch, right? So thanks again, folks, for being here. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, so some of you are familiar with startup grind, some are not. Um, one of the early Google employees decided to go his own way, and then after trying it out, realized uh, what a grind it is to launch your own business. Yeah. So he thought there needs to be some kind of support ecosystem, some support system for entrepreneurs, where they can hear from people that are more experienced than they about uh, not just their success stories, but their failures and their hard lessons learned. And uh, so they started a chapter in Silicon Valley about eight years ago. Now there are about 500 chapters globally. This is one of the newest ones. Uh, so this is Startup Grind Marin. We have to be hosting it at VenturePad because I have, uh, I'm blessed to have access to this space. And Chris, I think uh, yesterday or today was just approved as my co-director for Startup Grind Marin. Nice. So we'll be running events every one to two months out of VenturePad for Startup Grind Marin. And it'll be what these things call fireside chats. Normally you don't have a party with the chat. Normally it's just a party. But because it's the holidays, we decided to combine it. And especially having such a stellar guest, uh, we decided to <laughs> uh, make it a special night. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Helen led Equator to become the first coffee roaster in California yes. to earn a certified B Corp status, very special, mm. uh, and a reputation as an early champion for fair trade practices. 12 year, years in a row, Equator has been, remained on the top San Francisco Business mm -hmm. Times list of the top 100 women-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. okay. In 2016, became the first LGBT certified business to win SBA Small Business of the Year. Yes. Mark Cuban. Very, very. Uh, He's there. Yes. He <laughs> said, all you want is a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it, yes. So, what was your original vision in, in wanting to start Equator? Why'd you do it? I think we started Equator. I want to show you the film, too. And I, I think maybe we do the questions after the film a little bit, but I'll give you a little bit of background. So uh, we started Equator because we were in our early 30s, totally unemployable, right? And I've, I've said this before, but you know, growing up in Boston, being a blue collar kid and always wanting to live in California, having never been to California my entire life. And um, I said to my parents, I want to move to California to be an entrepreneur. And she says, well, what's that? And I said, that's people who have their own businesses. You know, go to venture pad and start things and do stuff. She said, she said we, don't, honey, we don't do that. I said, no, I'm going to do it. Said, we don't. You don't. You and Dad don't. But I think that's something we'd like to do. So in 1995, my partner and I, um, in 1992, we were, I worked at MCI selling voice and data networks in Boston at the Prudential Center. So you can imagine, you can't taste, you can't feel it. You kind of look out the window and you talk about fiber optics and D1s. There's no story to that, so we wanted a story. So I came out and I met my partner Brooke, and we traveled to the Northwest, and we started seeing the whole special thing happening. So we were sitting in Pioneer Square, out in front of Starbucks, and I said, Brooke, you've traveled all around the world. You love coffee. I love business. I said, let's start a coffee company. Sure, this is what you're doing. Yeah, let's start a coffee company. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Let's, we love coffee. Let's do that. Right? So we were in a little business plan on the way back, a little napkin on the way down. And uh, so we opened up two coffee bars, and we called them Europa. That sounds good. And then, um, you know, we ran the P&Ls, and we got the leases and the whole thing. But nobody would tell, the roaster that we had at the time would tell Brooke anything about the product. And Brooke wanted to know sort of, you know, the potassium in the soil, what the roaster was paying for the product, if 
where are the children going to school, all these things. And all they would say is, you know, copies from South America, South, South America, Central America, East Africa, and Indonesia, we really wanted to know about the farmer. So uh, we saw those locations and she started roasting. She took a little, um, she got a little studio over at Paradise Drive and a little garage. We sold the other half of this diamond ring. So if I need to get out of town, I can do it quickly. Um, and we took a little Petrucini tabletop roaster. And I started calling anybody that would listen about our product. We named the company Equator. It's from coffee and cheese grown along the equator. And we chose the Bengal Tiger because we're women owned for its rarity, grace, and power, which is so important when you have a brand. I'd like to talk about those things. So the film I want to show you. I mean, 1995 in the garage, fast forward today. We have over 130 employees. We have seven retail stores, three more coming. We have over 450 wholesale customers. We're roasting here in Marin. We have businesses in Southern California. We started roasting in um, New York now, so we have people in New York. So we're layering this company with the next generation. So right now we have all these millennials, which are so important. You are so important. You like a lot of information. Tell you a lot of things, and then there's no 40 year olds, right? So, we just took a, a, a minority investment from a family fund to layer over that CFO, CMO, and COO because all the 50 year olds are a little bit like wobbly. We've got this whole deck of 40 year olds, which I call Pilates, like my core now. So, 10 years ago, we're downtown San Francisco, and the San Francisco Business Times is interviewing us, and of course, I'm in sales. I know you can tell, right? So whenever you have a product, whether it's chocolate, whether it's an app, tech, engineering, whatever it is, you have to have people, product, and process. I happen to be the people. Brooke was the product, and Maureen from the Bronx, 12 years of Catholic school, MBA from Connecticut, went to school at Sunday, sat through my yard, said, you know how to do math. You do the checkbook. You do the processes. And 10 years ago, the Business Times said, what's next for Equator? And I said, oh, we're going to buy a farm. You know, we're going to travel to Panama and get a farm. So it, you know, opens up the San Francisco Business Times. Equator buys farm. The person says, "Why did you tell them that?" <laughs> so, you know, I knew we'd eventually do it. <laughs> so I want to show you something that is so special, and this is called Finca Sofia, and it's an unplanted coffee farm that we purchased ten years ago. There's only two other roasters in the United States that own their own coffee farm. It's not like the billionaires going out and like, I think I'll get into wine, right? This is a whole different ball game. So I want to show you Finca Sophia because it's so special and then tell you a little bit after. I'm gonna roll. It's one of our little dogs, we have about four. We're all injured now. This is uh, Angel, he's our farm manager. This is the worker housing that we built. It has changed the way we think about the people who grow coffee all over the world. And it links us right to the cup and how we tell that story. That's Baristo, the horse. It was Barista, but I was told it was a male. My name is Helen Russell. I'm co-founder and CEO of Equator Coffees and Tea in Marin County, California. And today we are on our farm that we co-own with Willem Boot and Captain Boot. We walked this incredible land that is Sega Sophia, and we fell in love with it. And we went back and we said, I think we want to do this. So that's how it all started, exactly 10 years ago. The journey has been transformative because we built worker housing, we have several families that live on the land, we have 11 employees here, we planted 10,000 shade trees, 30,000 seedlings, our first year of production we won the Good Food Awards. So to come here and know that as part of our whole story of the chain of well-being and to have David Poole who worked for Equator as our director of coffee. David and his family lived here on the farm and helped us build our worker housing. We specifically selected Finca Sofia because of its altitude and as being one of the highest farms in Central America. It really positions Finca Sofia to produce a coffee that's singular that you're not going to find anywhere else. 
Gish is a very unique varietal, and we decided to plant it because we thought that a combination of extremely high altitudes and one of the most unique varietals in the world could make for a great combination. I go back to the story, I go back to the chain of well-being, I go back to why we're here. This is a grand experiment. We're very, very fortunate that we are now getting coffee that we're presenting to the world. So many people have come together to make this a success. And we're so humbled by this project. It all kind of came together. No one should be allowed to own this type of earth and elevation. We have the highest coffee farm in Central America. At the highest point of the farm is 2,150 meters. When you walk the trails and you get to the top, you can see the Pacific Ocean, you can see Saraput on the other side, you can see Volcan Baru, and you can see the people that are living on the land that makes you want to go back and sell more coffee in the crater so you can do more things. The crater has been in business for 22 years. Brooke and I started that company in the garage. And our entire premise of building that business was to really honor every link in the supply chain. And unless we've actually owned this farm, we have such a better idea of what we should be paying for coffee and why that's important. The people on the farm, you know, quality leads to sustainability. We do all those measures that allow us to sell that coffee and to take care of the people around our family. That's what it's all about. And I'm so proud today to be part of this community it has been absolutely really loved. People say that, now I know what that means. This is the right one. Woo! That's because of Sophia. <laughs> so when I think about that, and I think about business, and I think about the chain of well-being, and I think about being a B Corp, I mean, you know, it's just these things come across, and you just kind of take that leap and you do them. We knew nothing about farming, but we had the right people. <coughs> We inherited the people that were on the land. It was an entire family. It was Ann Hal and his wife, Ann Helia, and uh, two of their children. And one of the things that we noticed 11 years ago when we were there with our partners, Willem and Catherine, is that little Ann Helica was scooting around in the back, and, and uh, Catherine's a nurse, so we pulled her forward and noticed that she had a, her leg was deformed. So we took her aside and we did a bunch of, we took her to uh, Panama City and did a bunch of x-rays. And a friend of mine who's a physician said, Helen, even if she moved into your house in Mill Valley and we stretched her leg, she'll never be able to walk on that leg. So we called, um, we called Tampa, what's the name of the uh, people that, um, Doctors Without Borders, and the woman, who, the woman who answered the phone was Panamanian, took a special interest in the case. So we flew her mother and little Aunt Helica, who was probably eight at the time, and I flew there with David, David, who is our farm manager, and who Brooke and I left the farm to. He was uh, our director of coffee at one point. That's what I love about coffee, because there's such a relationship that's formed from all along the supply chain. And we sat there and we said, you know, we did all these x-rays, and it looks like we need to take Angelica back to the US. So <laughs> the mother stands up and hands me Angelica. I said, not today. We're going <laughs> to take her today. We're going to take her. Um, so I was like, wow, I was like, fix her. And I was like, I'm going to take her. So we, we took her there. And next thing you know, this little girl who was indigenous clothing and is now like at the, got the, uh, the hair with the ponytails and a little Nike shirt. And it's got her little um, prosthetic. And she's riding around on this little Nike bike. And that's because we sell coffee. I mean, we started this company with $100,000. Now we're a $20 million business. And we bootstrapped this thing from day one. We just recently took an investment to layer on the next generation so we can keep this thing going, like the Patagonia of coffee. And there's so many stories in coffee. We don't do anything that's super, super extraordinary. But what we do is whatever we find, we leave it better than what we found it. Right? Everything that we've done, whether we are building a roasting plant and having that be sustainable in terms of the energy efficient roaster, a biodiesel bio truck, the lighting that we use, how we buy coffee, export coffee, import coffee, how it became a B Corp, all those things are super, super important to us. And then getting into retail most recently, you know, how, you know, did anyone ever hear about Equator other than like five years ago? Nobody knew who we were, right? We're just idiots, because I helped you with an espresso card at Grace <laughs> <laughs> Right? Um, 
But it was really retail that got us into wholesale. And five years ago, Starbucks bought La Belange. Does everybody remember that? The green giant came in and bought La Belange. And Pascal called me because he's French. And he said, you know what, Helen, I want to give you a call because something's going to happen today. I said, hi, Pascal. How are you? What's happening? Well, you know Starbucks, you know who they are, right? He said, yeah, I've heard about them. <laughs> he said, they roast coffee. You know that? I'm like, yes, what's happening? He said, well, they just bought us. I said, boom, I immediately just saw $1.1 million just fall out of the checking account. And you have these moments, right? And you sit in your office, and everybody's lined up at your door to see what the co-founder looks like. I'm like, hi, what's everything? Oh, everything's fine, don't worry. Oh my god, then the night in the wilderness. So. Brooke says to me, we need to get into retail. I said, I'm 50 years old, and I'm not getting up at 4.30 in the morning. She said, no, not you. Nobody wants to see you at 4.30 in the morning. That's guaranteed. So it was Devorah Freudiger, who was, our, who was our younger, who was our director of retail. And we met with Will and Nate, who own Proof Lab at Tam Junction. And, um, and I went down there, and I said, oh my god, I've been driving by this location. But when you get off premise, like you don't even have to surf, right? You get in there, and you can smell the ocean. You can't smell it on the other side of the street, but something about Proof Lab, you can smell the ocean. Your hair starts to blow. People get out of West Valley with a lot of hair and tank tops. You're like, people, you hear music lessons, you see the kids in the back doing skateboarding, and then you see a nursery, and I'm like, oh my god, this place is so special. And then Will comes out and he says, yeah, you know, I want to do an air pot brewer over at the, at the Patagonia station, but I've always wanted to do a coffee shop. And I said, Will, you know what? He says, but I don't drink coffee. I said, that's all right, I don't surf. Together, we're going to do this. And then we, we created Proof Lab, and I spent a year and a half down there telling our story about who we were and what we did. And the first person that comes there is Joe Peterson, the head of global workplace for all of LinkedIn. And he calls one of the team management company and says, I just had the best cup of coffee I've ever had. Fast forward now, we have four cafes at LinkedIn, we do all of their wholesale, we have $800,000 of business with them because we had that retail store where people could come in and experience us. So what we are today is we're a small, local, what I say, boutique coffee roasting company that is about jobs. We just happen to be a B Corp. Two years ago, winning small business of the year at a national level, and sitting on Harry Reid's couch. Those were the good old days. Huh, Harry Reid? Gone. Um, sitting on his couch, going out the window up there in Capitol Hill. And really being that company that our employees are proud of. You know, we just hired a branding agency, and I'm sure there's some branding people in the, in the room, and they say, you know, are you a purpose-driven company or are you a belief-driven company? I said, I don't know, just selling coffee. I don't know, I believe in a lot of things. And they said, I think you're a belief-driven company. I think your brand is very communal. People want to be there. I think it's extraordinary because everything along the supply chain you seem to touch and change. I think it's contemporary because you have this really cool, happy, happier camper that you kind of bring out and do events with. And I think it's conscious because you're a B Corp. I said, yeah. <coughs> but we never set out to do any of that. We never thought about doing any of that. What we wanted to do was have an amazing product. But you have to have the product. That's the most important thing. You have to respect and appreciate and value everyone. You have to have the vision. I always wanted to live in California. I always wanted to have the economic opportunities that I have now. Why? Not because I could buy another house or cars, because everybody in our company has health insurance. 100% health insurance. 130 people. Not easy to do. And it's so important with us. And when I sit down with Joe Peterson, and we might be 75% more per pound versus one of our other local coffee companies, we say we buy coffee for $2.50, there's shrink of 20%. We add on our overhead, and then we need to drop 10.5 to 12% of the bottom line so everybody has health insurance, which is what you'd want in a car dealership, right? You don't even know what you're doing. You're like, what is that? It's, like, it's 18,000. You want the mats? <laughs> no, there's no mats in the back. So another $500. You know what serious SM? Yeah. Another five minute all. So it's like what we do is we're extremely transparent as a company. And people appreciate that and they want that and they value that. So being in venture and having these opportunities that we have as entrepreneurs is probably the greatest gift we can have. 
having our own destiny in our hands, we've been very, very fortunate. But we have worked so hard as a company. And every time you buy Equator coffee, and I am not, I have no, I, you know what I think about 24-7? Selling more coffee. That's all I think about. Coffee, coffee. Do you have coffee? I go to my friend's house and go in the fridge and I see pizza in there. Don't look, it's right here. The equator's right here. I'm like, yeah, well, what's a pizza store in there? <laughs> we ran out. <laughs> I'm like, sure you did. It's always in a pizza. And I'm very good friends with Pete's. I am really good friends with John Colletta, who's the president of Pete's. Um, but, you know, never be, never be, never think about not selling your product. Be proud of your product. Talk about your product. It's your product. It's your life. People say to me, God, you work a lot. This is my life. I'm the luckiest person in the world because we've created Equator, and it has done so much from food, security projects in Tanzania, to what we did with Angelica, and we didn't even think about it. All I think about is, you know, is if I'm going to get the Google business at Guggenheim, why? Because I want to sell more coffee so we can do more things. So when you're in that store and you're in that line, people come up to you all and say, hell, this line is too much. I said, they all have health insurance. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Stay. Stay in the line. They hate it. But people want the story. Because it's not what you do, it's why you do it. We just don't buy coffee, sell coffee, roast coffee. What we do is we travel to that farmer's gate. We get dirt on our boots. We go in and we see the children. We try to build worker housing. I took my sister-in-law, who's a Berkeley builder. We visit all the worker housing where these children are sitting next to the flames. Oh, it's not coming down. And I was like, what can we do? We're going to build these stoves from Guatemala, and we're going to put them there. I mean, we're never going to be a $300 million company. If we're a $30 million company, you'll see me go by on my bike, right? But what we are is a company that tries to be extraordinary, which means extraordinary in everything that we do all along the supply chain. Because I'm very, very aware of that, and I've said this, and Julie's heard it before, that we're all going to be dead, right? Every one of us in this room, and we have, we see what's going on at Chico with the families and all those things. So no matter how tired we get, making a difference on a daily basis, and we get to do that with coffee. Coffee's the most amazing product. When I look in that cup, and I see that coffee from Rwanda. I think about Alice Musabende when I went to Rwanda, this young woman who lost her entire family to the genocide. And I look in there and I see Alice, and I see Alice calling me and saying, can you and Brooke stand in for our parents, for my parents up in, um, up in Ottawa? Yes, we'll go in and we'll stand in for your parents because you lost them. And now she's getting her PhD in uh, England at the University of Cambridge. And she's like my kid. She came out last year with her two cubs, and I was like a nut because I've never been a mother. I was at the mall like 20 times with gifts and making pancakes. She thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever seen. I was like going to burn the house down with the pancakes because she never had a childhood, right? And I tried to make up for it, and I think I did it. And I didn't have to, but I love that kid. And here she is getting her PhD. So if you can't do something, you do it, but it's, it's complicated life, right? So. We've been blessed, and we're so fortunate. And I thank you all for listening and being here and being a part of VenturePad. And um, if you can buy Equator Coffee, great. Because <laughs> we can do more if you do. Thank you all very much. So we are going to have a few minutes of Q&A. On a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Helen. I think it was such a great to hear your story. Um, and you're right, I didn't know the equator. No. Maybe three years ago, I went to the Berkeley campus because I was recruiting some kids there. And yep. Everywhere I went, there was an equator store. And I thought, what is this? And I just, you just get popping up, popping up. People say, oh, you want to go grab a coffee? Sure. Where do you want to go? Equator. Yeah, it was like the really great. Starbucks. So you mentioned um, the global head of the communication for LinkedIn and the Devon Appetit yep. uh, article. What else would you contribute with that kind of you know overnight success? It seemed like out of nowhere, you guys were just everywhere. Well, you know, we, we, we you know, it's interesting. So we were, so we were, so we, we had a lot of great news on, along the way, right? So. Um, about 20 years ago, I said to Brooke, wouldn't it be great if we got a great restaurant to call us, right? I, I'm a manifester, right? I, you know what? I'm here because I only focus on what I want to have happen. This sounds funny, right? If you met my brother, you'd be like, whoa, is that the same family? How's <laughs> your mortgage, Brooke? You know, send me another check. Um, it's, 
it's like Thomas Keller called. I said to Brooke, I wish, I wish Chef Keller would call the phone rings. It's, it's Laura Cunningham and Chef Thomas Keller. So quietly, we get the French Laundry, we get Bouchon, we get Per Se, now we get all of TKRG. So we had all this wholesale. And then we got <coughs> Tracy Desjardins, and then we got Suzanne Going Group. All before we had retail and nobody knew who we were. When we started roasting, there were only 35 coffee roasting companies on the West Coast. <coughs> Do you know how many there are now? Guess. 400. 400. There were only five women roasting coffee then. And it's just, I don't know, it's great when you're naive. You're just like, you just got to keep going because the alternative is I have to work at a bank. If, I don't make, if this doesn't work, I, I guess I'm going to have to work at a bank. My father said, you know what? You work at a bank, you live nearby, you'll take us to Walgreens when we need medication, you'll get married, this will be good. Like, it does not sound good. That says, I don't like it. Walgreens, driving. Right? So, yeah, so it all kind of, it just kind of happened. We were quietly doing our thing. And I remember when James from Blue Bottle called me and he said, gosh, you know, I gotta get into wholesale. We're gonna, you know, we're in retail, we gotta get into wholesale. I said, I gotta get into retail. You know, and I don't know how to do retail. He says, I don't know how to do wholesale. The difference is, Nestle's wrote him a check for 700 million bucks. Nobody has called me for 700 million bucks. Yet. Yet. Nah, we just manifested it. He's a, he's a manifester, James. What are some environmentally sustainable practices you conduct um, either agriculturally or on the retail area, in the retail yep. area? So all our cups are um, compostable. Uh, I think the most important thing that we've done on the roasting side is we bought the fourth roaster 15 years ago that was 80% less natural gas which is called the Loring Smart Roast. It's manufactured here in Petaluma. So using less gas um, in terms of Bay Area air quality, we just upgraded to a larger roaster. So we were one of the first roasters on the West Coast to do that. We also have all of our service vehicles, our Priuses, our lighting in our roasting plant uh, are all um, LEDs. So we did a lot early on, not because we were going to get graded on it or Marin Green was going to come in. It's just like the way what we do at the house, right? We just kind of did it there. Um, on the on the farm here, um, we do a lot of machete clearing. We don't use herbicides or pesticides. And now having the farm, I really understand that because if you used herbicides or pesticides, you'd have 10 percent, 10 times more of the production that we have. You know, but we got a bunch of goats out there, and we're clearing by hand, so. Things have been a little bit slower. So we try to be as sustainable as we possibly can whenever we can. Are we perfect? No. But our intentions are to be perfect on that level. It's hard. Really, really hard. What are you clearing? Oh, well, we're clearing a lot of brush around little seedlings with our little coffee plants. We planted uh, 10,000 shade trees and 20,000 seedlings, which gave us the geisha varietal. And this farm, there's been four grand a month going down to this farm for the last 12 years, and on the other side as well with uh, Catherine and Willow. <coughs> so what we're clearing is brush, um, you know, there's, there's roya, there's rust, there's climate change, there's so many things that are going on at the farm, trying to get a team out there. We have 11 workers down there that are clearing all the time with machetes versus doing the mop <coughs> to kind of, you know, to do it faster. So we're doing as best we can down there. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're doing a trip in February. We're going to have raking. Got it. Got it. Raking and paper towels is, I think, the way forward. Yeah. <laughs> raking? That was awesome. That's bad. It's good. So the way I heard about Equator was from your deal with Revive Kombucha. Oh, and I wondered how that partnership kind of came about and other partnerships you might be working on. Um, well, Revive Kombucha, you know, was purchased by Pete's. Right? So we actually had our coffee in there until Pete's came along, which was, oh. was great for Sean, right? That was super, super great. He loved our coffee, we loved his kombucha, we put it in there, it was a beautiful thing. Um, we just did a thing with Griffo, um, where we have our, our coffee in there, martini chocolate mix. Um, we're doing something with Endorphin. We did a, a nut butter with Justin's, which are Tiger Walk Espresso. So we like doing those little things which is super, super cool with, with other companies that we're familiar with and that sort of share our vision. But there's nothing else coming uh, down the pike. We do a lot with athletes, right? We do, we have three women that we, 
that we support on a monthly basis. We're, we like to think of ourselves as a, life, as a lifestyle brand. I think of it as a Katy Perry concert. Whether you're 3 or 83, you feel good when you come in our store. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to put my jacket on you. I'm going to get you a waffle. I'm going to give you stickers. And I'm going to carry you around if you're two. <laughs> That's what I want to do. That's who we are. This is this kindness, right? Just being kind. We're trying to be kind. You know, that's it, right? We can't, we hire for kindness and then we train them how to be baristas because they're all freaking masters and they're all, you know, concert pianists. And they're behind there making coffee. In the back. Yes, sir. So thank you for sharing your story. It's, um, I'm a, I'm a former LinkedIn person, so, so you had the coffee. I am so happy that that p took place. Still there. I, I miss the lattes tremendously, oh, but we, thank you. fortunately, we st I still enjoy them daily in other places. At your house, I hope. of course. I'm and in my new place of employment, <laughs> there'll be some beans that I'll be bringing in. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of just piggyback on what you just said about hiring. Yes. You mentioned kindness. Yep. I, I, I get the sense that culture is an important aspect uh, at what you do at Equator. Yeah. And I'd be curious to know outside of the skill set required for the position that you're looking to fill, mm -hmm. um, what other attributes or characteristics do you look for when you bring those, decide okay. to make an I offer? I mean, we definitely have a multi-generational brand, right? Um, which makes it somewhat challenging. I mean, we hired 13 people this year um, because of the minority investment that we brought on. So you have from millennials up to my age, right, and then that core. And you know with the millennials that they're going to be there for two years, and I always like to say that to them, right? You know, I know you're going to be here for two years. And like, what? I like, no, it's going to be like 23 months, and we're going to be together. And I'm going to give you, you're not going to get a watch, I'm going to give you everything I got, a great reference, and I'm going to put you out the door. Um, it's such a different culture to build a business on, right? Because you've got the three of us who have been working nonstop. Maureen McHugh, the Bronx, has never been out of work a day since 1995 sick. God bless him, right? Wow. Just now, she's come in with, you know, her arms up here, she's got to go do this, that, you know. But it's just, that's how we grew up. It's like, when you deal with three women from the East Coast, it's like, whoa, we can't do that. You know? We, we joke, like someone says, oh, I got a sniffle. I said, oh, go take a week off. Take a week off. We're terrible. <laughs> but now I get new people. So it's like, it's all about the culture. So I mean, hire a human resource person. And I swear, it's like, it's, it's like United Market, like take a ticket. I'm like, what are they doing in there? Who are they, what are, what's going on? It's been like a line since you got here. What are they talking about? What's going on in there? They want to share their feelings about how they're feeling, how work is, and work-life balance, and work-life integration, and work-life focus. I'm like, get back to work. That's like the same to balance and when you get back, in, get back out there, right? So we've got this like interesting culture, right? Because it's so multi-generational, right? And so we've come up with this sort of way of being in the world, we've launched so many careers in coffee. I mean, there was a woman who worked for us who um, had an undergraduate degree and she worked at Pete's, but she never could get out on the floor because they didn't have women roasters, so all she could do was deliver mail. So she was our first female roaster after Brooke, so Brooke worked with her for two years. And now she's a green coffee buyer and travels all over the world and does an amazing job. So we've launched a lot of careers. So our culture is about give us everything you have, we'll give you everything we have. And then everybody goes their separate ways, and we just keep building upon that. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Work life yeah. focus, I call it. Yeah. Focus. Any other questions? It's 2,150 meters, about 6,500 feet. Yeah, about 70. Yeah, about 7,000 feet. It's pretty high. When you get up there and you see the ocean, it's just like wow. It's pretty cool. So this is Christmas here, right? Holidays, and I'm talking. Is you learn Spanish? Uh, piquito. Mi español es piquito. Brooke says I've got 15 <laughs> words and she's never heard anything like it. I can navigate two weeks with it. Mi gustaría el cerveza. ¿Dónde está el baño? Mi gustaría el café. Right? It's pretty good. Una cerveza. Una, una. Una, dos, 
Pronto! <laughs> yeah, we're not feminism. Yes, I only have half of that. Chris? Chris! Uh, folks, I just wanted to, uh, again, thank you all for coming. We're going to yes. wrap things up. Um, can we give Helen a hand? Yeah, yeah. So one other thing is we are celebrating entrepreneurship and the holidays, and yes. I have two local leaders in government and entrepreneurship uh, sitting or standing right beside the government. This, this is David Connolly. He's the president of our Board of Supervisors. Can we nice. give him a hand? Hey. I don't know if you wanted to say hello or mention something. He's, David has been an incredible supporter of VenturePad from day one. And uh, we're so grateful for, for what you do. Huge fan of the Quator and great talk tonight. You're doing wonderful things. Uh, a lesson for all entrepreneurs on how to, to be successful in every sense of the word, really. So well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Dana. Can you stand up, please? Oh, Lord. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Lorenzo Jones. Lorenzo is our. Well, Lorenzo Jones. Jones is, is the founder and owner of, of Taste yep. Kitchen and Bakery in Fairfax. Yep. Uh, a very successful entrepreneur in you know, four years now. I mean, four years since and, and yeah. running strong. And, yes. Yes. Um, I won't ask about profitability. <laughs> That's Thank you. Um, <laughs> an exceptional coach and mentor yeah. to to many. Uh, he also next year will be the chair of the board of our Sanderfeld Chamber. Oh, no. I, I, so, I, I asked Lorenzo to just mention something about just the role of entrepreneurship uh, in the county and what the chamber perhaps is, is doing to encourage things and just your, your thoughts overall. Well, I, I just want to go back to, to Helen for a second. Um, one of the things You're that, uh, yes, we are partners and so, you know, I really want to acknowledge the, the partnership that, that you've been for us. And you know, I don't know if you wove it into your conversation, but no matter what you do, what your business is, it's important to have partnerships. We didn't know everything. And, and uh, many of you may or may not know everything. And I like to give this talk on throwing the party at work. And there's nine points of throwing the party. And, and one of the points is, if you're not good at it, if you don't know, go find someone that, that, that knows that part of the business. And so uh, I appreciate the, the partnership. I think it's been three years yeah. uh, that we've been uh, supplying products to Equator. Yeah. And um, we're here today because of our partnership. And so I want to personally thank you, thank you. For, for the partnership and uh, uh, much success. And so we, we, I guess there's no more to say other than uh, the chamber is just thriving. We've got an exciting year coming up, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you at some of the events, whether it's here or any place else in, uh, in Summerfield or Marin County. So, and by the way, if you're enjoying the food, it's because of this man. Yeah. A brief sample of what we do, but uh, again, thanks. Uh, thanks for hosting this great event. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go enjoy some uh, food and wine. Yeah. Schmooze. Yeah. 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 Thanks, everybody. Schmooze. Yeah. Hey, nice to see you. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. I saw you, I think, just from afar.